This is Ed. Welcome to another Exchange 2016 video. In this video, I want to talk about certificates. Um, there's always been a big, uh, I wouldn't say a problem about certificates, where admins struggle. But I wanted to show you that it's pretty simple to actually configure a certificate or import a certificate. Now, generally what I do is, um, if I have a wildcard, um, most places that I use wildcard because it's cheaper and you can actually do a lot more than just having a sans cert. Um, if you're an organization that can't afford a wildcard or there's no need for it, then you would use a sans cert with your names on it, your auto discover and your um, URL, so mail.domain.com or webmail.domain.com, etc. Now, generally what you do is, um, if you want to import a certificate, you can do it via the Exchange Admin Center, but what I've found is um, if you head over to IIS and you expand, right, so if you see my server, I'm logged in, there's a server certificates page. If you double click this, you can go and import. Now, this is going to import a PFX file. So you would obviously point it to where you want to, um, where it's stored, sorry, and then you'd put in the password and then you click OK and you'll have your certificate listed here. Then you can then go to your, obviously your default website, to your bindings, and you can head over to your um, HTTPS and you would see your certificate here that you've just imported. You'd obviously choose it so that it's the correct one because it's external facing. And then you would do the same on the back end and go to your bindings and you'll choose your certificate again as well. And then you have to do an IIS reset. That is pretty much how straightforward it is to import a certificate. Now, you can also do it from here. So you could also import a certificate or you can export it. So if you are, if you already have a certificate on here, you can then export it and import it on the next server. So I want to show you on the import side. If you wanted to import a certificate, you've basically, what I found is if you choose localhost C$ dollar and then you share that folder so big folder one slash dot pfx as an example and then you put your password in and then you'd obviously click um, next and it'll do the import and then when you're done you will click on it you would then edit the button or edit the uh, certificate to view its properties and then you'd obviously select SMTP and whatever services you want now, be aware that if you are running um, a wildcard certificate, you cannot tick pop an IMAP from here because it doesn't recognize the wildcard. You have to use PowerShell to set your pop an IMAP using, um, so I'll just launch a PowerShell window for you so I can show you what I'm talking about. Just waiting for that to load. Okay, so now that it's loaded, you can basically go type get uh, pop settings minus server and we format the list and what we do then is you can see that um, obviously the internal settings is pointing to my um, server locally and not the external name and the x509 certificate name is basically what you are going to set so 
if we clear the screen, you would go set pop settings minus server ex 2016 a uh, minus x 500 to bigger name. It'll be pop dot domain dot com. That is because I have a wildcard, for example, in here. And this is how I would do it. Now, the same would apply if you're doing IMAP settings. You would use set dash IMAP settings server the name and IMAP.domain.com, for example. That's if you have a wildcard. Coming back to the certificates um, on the EAC, if it's just a single SAN cert with one name on it, then it's very easy just to either click the, the pencil button or double click it and then choose pop an IMAP and then the last thing that you have to do is you need to go to um, your services for your certificates to you know, first of all bind um, and secondly you need to set you can see pop an IMAP are set to manual you need to change them to automatic and start them and then that way, once you've done a reboot after your configuration or an IIS reset um, and start your services, then it should be responding on the name it or on the name that you've set. And if you look in the event log, you'll see that it'll say IMAP is accepting connections over whatever um, authentication method you've set. Um, if you have a problem with your certificates, so even though you've imported it might come up here with an invalid status or revocation check failed. Um, then you need to make sure that you either get a new copy of the cert or if a revocation failed means that it can't go out to the internet to check that it's a valid cert, can't check the chain. You need to either then check your connection, maybe you're behind a proxy, it's blocking the connection, maybe your gateway doesn't allow it, where you need to then ask the admins to allow access to authenticate so that it can do its checks. And that is certificates in a nutshell. Thank you for watching.